A huge thank you to everyone who commented on my last DC load video where everything went a bit wrong. Um, I've learnt a lot from your comments and I really do appreciate them. And I appreciate all my comments on all my videos and uh, perhaps I should take the opportunity to thank everybody who gets involved with this channel. Now I've got a couple of experiments to try uh, using some of the ideas that have been put forward um, but one thing I do want to point out before I go any further is yet another one of my mistakes on this particular um, project and if we just remove this circuit board um, and it's this resistor um, if you remember, the first one I put in was 0.47 ohms, and I said, well, that's too low, and I'm struggling to read the voltage difference. So I put this one in, and I ordered the wrong one. This is an R1 resistor, um, and that means it's 0.1 ohms. So actually, in the code, I'm saying it's one ohm resistor. It's not. It's a 0 0.1 ohm. And of course, I've gone completely the wrong direction um, for the Arduino to make the correct calculations. So I have gone out and I've bought another 1R resistor, a one ohm, 25 watt shunt resistor. And uh, if everything works as it should then perhaps this one will now go into the DC load. This is my first little demonstration here. I'm using two LEDs, they're warm white, um, two 20 ohm resistors, and uh, this potentiometer here. Now, as you can see, the LED on the left looks considerably dimmer than the one on the right, and there's a good reason for that. The one on the left is running at about a 50% uh, duty cycle, um, and the one on the right is on all the time. And this, of course, is how I was basing um, the theory behind my electronic DC load. If I turn off the MOSFET for half the time, we should get half the current flowing through. But, of course, that's not quite right, especially when it comes to MOSFETs, because hopefully I can demonstrate here that this LED on the left is not using the analog right function. It is simply being turned off and turned on again in the loop of the Arduino code. And when I change the potentiometer, I'm changing the delay between the on and the off. So when it gets to its slowest point, it's actually on for a second and off for a second, but of course it's showing that it is fully on and the uh, light we can see is the same from both LEDs. But when I take it to its fastest point, this LED is still turning off and is still turning on, but it looks a lot dimmer. And of course it is going from fully off to fully on, just our eyes and the transient response in the LED, that sort of thing, and probably some capacitance in the breadboard, means that it looks like it's on constantly, but dim. For this experiment, I've replaced the LEDs now, and I've put in a MOSFET, it's the 3205, the one that I'm using in my DC load currently, and I am analog right in to it. Um, so if I increase the potentiometer, we can see the pulse width increases also until it's fully on. And so to go back to the first example, it's roughly there, I'd suggest 50% uh, on, 50% off. But of course the problem is that that is fully on and fully off. And that means for this logic level MOSFET it does go pretty much from infinite resistance to zero resistance. And that's not what we want in a DC load. A few people suggested I needed a low pass filter and that's what I've constructed here. Um, 
in series with the output from the Arduino, the PWM output, we've got a resistor, which is uh, 4.7K, I think this one is. And between the gate of the MOSFET and ground, we have this uh, 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. And now when I increase the pulse width on the Arduino, instead of seeing fully on and fully off, we're now seeing the voltage increase all the way up to 5 volts. We have got 5 volts there, this is 0 and it's 5 volts per division, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now we have an analog voltage from our digital PWM signal. And I'm interested to find out what that does to the resistance of the MOSFET. And now I have my multimeter plugged in uh, and it's set to resistance down here and it's connected between source and drain of the MOSFET. Um, so now we're hoping to see a variable resistance as I change the potentiometer. So if I just give it a little bit of voltage, we're not seeing anything currently. Aha, right. So I've lifted it up there and we've got 0.7 mega ohms so that's quite a lot of resistance so far and as I tweak that potentiometer up it's a bit skitty but look now we've got 56 K 56 kilo ohms and a little bit further again 3.9 kilo ohms and we keep um twisting that potentiometer and look 105 ohms now 31 ohms and eventually of course 12 13 ohms there if I turn it fully on well we've still got 12 ohms there with it the potentiometer all the way to the top but we had something from the mega ohm region all the way down to the teens of ohms. Well, that's pretty impressive. And this variable resistance is all down to the linear region of the MOSFET uh, because, you know, at two and a half volts, for example, somewhere around there, I'm not getting the gate fully on so it's allowing some current to flow through it but not as much as it would if I had it fully on. So this is the schematic we've come up with so far here's where the PSU connects the thing we're testing with our load um, and obviously the current goes through this resistor here the shunt resistor we measure both sides on the Arduino using a couple of voltage dividers because this is a high voltage section, I guess you might call it, I'm thinking up to 15 volts anyway. And then we drive the MOSFET with a digital pin here and using this low pass filter to get effectively an analog voltage here to drive the MOSFET uh, and, and use it as a variable resistor. But I'm still a bit unsure about this resistor here being on the high part of the circuit run the low part of the circuit. But if you Google DC electronic load, you'll probably come up with a schematic very similar to this. Uh, this is basically Dave Jones's uh, design. He put a second op amp in, and there's a variable uh, resistor potentiometer over here supplying the voltage, but we don't need to worry about that at the moment. The item we're testing, the power supply, for example, goes straight through the MOSFET and through this one ohm resistor here down to ground and using the negative feedback here of the op amp um, 
it will adjust the output to ensure that this point here equals that point there and therefore give you a constant load through here. It's a really simple and clever design but the resistor in the low part of the circuit I think gives us a bit of a problem or I guess some people might suggest it's a, a good feature but if we can say um, if this op amp is supplied by 5 volts and we'll assume it's a rail to rail uh, op amp so it can go anywhere from 0 to 5 volts on this output and we pull 1 amp through this circuit we would see 1 volt here at this point um, the last volt here to be dropped across this 1 ohm resistor um, V equals IR so 1 volt is 1 ohm times 1 amp and um, that may well work but the, the difference across the MOSFET between the source pin here and the gate pin well it could be anything up to 4 volts and that might turn the MOSFET on well enough uh, to pull that current through but if we wanted 2 amps of current to go through this MOSFET and this circuit well we'd have 2 volts at this point and suddenly now there's only a difference of 3 volts and that might not be enough to turn this MOSFET on enough to actually get that 2 volts and that 2 amps flowing through this circuit so this might self limit so I'm sold on the idea of the low pass filter on the output of the Arduino here uh, currently direct, uh, directly connected to the gate of the MOSFET that's certainly worth a try and perhaps I might need to look at putting an op amp in here as well but I'm hoping the Arduino might be fast enough, um, perhaps a little bit optimistic there. But I am still undecided on whether the resistor should be in the high or the low part of the circuit and the advantages and disadvantages of each. Perhaps you'd like to comment down below and give me some tips and ideas on that. Um, but I'm going to do some testing and hopefully... Uh, within the next couple of videos on this subject, I might have a reasonably working DC load to show you. So hopefully you'll join me in the future. Uh, please do comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.